This video lesson will summarize the concept of half-life of radioisotopic elements. Remember that the radioactive decay of any isotopic element on an atom-by-atom -atom basis is completely unpredictable. It's very random. Uh, and, and therefore, we need some sort of statistical way to describe the average amount of time it takes for a, a single atom of a radioisotopic element to decay to some other element. And we can't do that for one atom, but if we have a bulk sample of millions, trillions of atoms, we can describe the likelihood of any single decay by a concept called half-life. Half-life is a time. It is an amount of time. And uh, essentially, it's described as the amount of time required for one half of the radioactive particles in any sample to decay into the daughter elements. And it can be described mathematically using, again, some, some uh, statistical and probability uh, techniques. And, and it is also an exponential process. How do we know it's exponential? Well, we can look at uh, the population, how the population of isotopic elements changes over time as they decay. And the curves always look like this. They are curved. Uh, and this is a nice curve of, um, of radioisotopic decay. It's just some random generic uh, decay. But notice the left axis, the y-axis, is uh, sample remaining. So at time zero, when the decay starts, we have 100% of the isotopic uh, element available. And then as it goes through half-lives and as it decays, we can look at, all right, uh, at what point does it reach 50% of its original population? That would be one half-life. And so if we go to the graph and we just find, okay, 50% is right about here. We go over to the curve and drop down. That's exactly one half-life. 50% of 50%, in other words, another half-life would be around 25%. And I'm going to guess that's right about here. So again, go over to the curve and drop down. You are at two half-lives. Uh, half of 25% of the original amount would be 12.5%. That's probably right about here uh, or so. And again, if we draw a line over to the curve and drop down, we're right at about three. And you can see how this would describe a curve that gets progressively smaller and smaller. And yet, mathematically speaking, would never reach zero. This is one of the ideas behind calculus. You have an infinite series of smaller and smaller numbers that never reaches uh, a certain value. But of course, that's not true for atoms, because at some point, you're going to decay down to one or maybe two atoms, or let's just say one atom, and then that will decay to no more of the original remaining 100%. So at some point, it does actually reach zero. But mathematically speaking, it doesn't. So there's a little bit of a difference between the mathematics that describe half-lives and the, the physical reality of atoms decaying to other atoms. So these are problems that can be solved graphically. If we have, here's another graph of uh, a, decay, uh, a decay of an isotopic, uh, a radioisotopic element. However, there's a little difference of the, uh, on the axis. Look at on the axis is activity or uh, counts per second, for example, on a uh, Geiger counter. This would be the number of blips on a Geiger counter, which tells you the number of decays per second. Um, so the original amount at time zero here is, again, here's time zero, is uh, 80 counts per second. Well, what would one half-life be? Of course, it's 40 counts per second. That's the population has decreased by one half. So if we go to 40 counts per second, and again, go over to the curve, here's 40 counts per second, go over to the curve and drop down, we can figure out what the half-life is. Looks like the half-life is approximately six seconds. Will that hold true for another half-life? That should be 12 seconds. Well, half of 40 then would be 20. Let's go to 20, and drop down, and you're at 12 seconds. Half of 20 would be 10. Go over here, we should be at around 18, and lo and behold, we are. So you understand the idea now of half-life. It's an infinite series. The decay is exponential. It's described by a curve. Um, and uh, it can also be described with a mathematical formula. So let's see how we can develop that formula. Here's an example. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's take a radioisotopic element, gallium-68, and it has a half-life of a little over an hour, 68.3 minutes. 
how much of a 20 gram sample remains after one half-life or two half-lives or three half-lives? Now, so this is something you can do on your fingers and toes. Uh, if we take 20 grams and uh, go through one half-life, we're obviously going to have 10 grams. Two half-lives, we're down to five grams. Three half-lives, 2.5 grams, et cetera. You get the idea. Four half-lives would be 1.25 grams. So what we're doing mathematically then is we're taking an original amount, let's just call that original amount n sub zero, or the number at time zero. Uh, the number of, let's say, radioisotopic atoms, or in this case, the number of grams, 20. And we're multiplying by one half x number of times, and that x is equal to the number of half-lives. So if, for example, let's do this, uh, let's do this one, three half-lives right here. If we put that one half to the three in an exponential series. Aha, there's the source of our exponent in the curve that we saw in the decay, in the decay curve. Uh, then we'll end up with an answer. All right, we had n sub zero. Let's make this n sub zero was equal to 20 grams times one half three times is equal to 2.5. Again, 20 times one half is 10, times one half is five, times one half is 2.5. And so we get this answer. That's the answer we're looking for. So the, the mathematics behind this has a format. And it looks like this right here. And this is actually a pretty important formula right here. Um, and let's look at what these numbers mean. Let me, let me scroll the slide down, what these symbols mean. Uh, N up here in the top right corner is the number of half-lives. There's the exponent. And in this case, n is nice round numbers, one, two, three, four half-lives, et cetera. n sub t is the amount remaining at time t. And this is what we're solving for in, in, this, uh, uh, in this last example. The n sub t is the amount remaining at time t. Okay. Sorry, back here. n sub t is the amount remaining at time t. So that's, that's what you're solving for. And n sub zero is the original amount, the amount you, of radioactive isotope you started with. Um, now, n sub zero, or the original amount, can be a bunch of different things. In our example here, it was a mass. We started with 20 grams of the original material. But it can also be activity in counts per second. Let me go back to this graph right here. This is an example of activity in counts per second. So we had an original amount of 80 counts per second. It can also be uh, a percent remaining. And that was this graph right here, where we started with 100%, and then some amount of time later, we were down to 50%, 25%, et cetera. So this is a pretty important uh, formula right here. N sub t, the original amount, I'm sorry, N sub t, the amount remaining at some later time, is equal to the original amount times one half to the exponent n, where n is equal to the number of half lives that we've gone through. Now, the only tricky part here uh, comes when n is not a nice round number. What if the number of half lives is not two half lives or three half lives? That's easy. You're dividing by two or multiplying by one half, you know, two times or three times, depending on the number of half lives. What if it's not a perfectly nice round number? Well, that, that's really not too hard to do. Let's, let's work with an example here. Here's polonium 204. It's got a half life of, of 3.53 hours. Let's say we started with 1.00 grams of polonium 204. So that's our N sub zero. That's our original amount. Uh, how much remains after 12 hours? Well, you can see that this is not going to divide in a very beautiful, pretty round number fashion. 12 hours uh, and 3.53 hours per half-life. So how many half-lives have we gone through yet? Well, that, that's pretty simple to solve. We just take total elapsed time, 12 hours, and divide by the time per half-life, 3.53 hours. And we get uh, this formula right here. So the number of half-lives in this case is not a nice round number. It's going to be uh, three point, sorry, 12 hours is our total uh, amount of elapsed time divided by the half-life, which was 3.53 hours per half-life. That tells you the number of half-lives we've gone through. So there, that's what this stands for. T is elapsed time. Uh, 
T sub one half is of course the half life. So when we solve for this, uh, we end up with, let's see here, what's the number? Uh, 3.40 numbers of half lives. We'll come back to this in just a second, 3.40 half lives. So notice we now have these two, uh, these two formulas right here, which, whoa, that didn't work out. Um, let me undo that. There we go. Those two formulas here are very similar in appearance. They have one thing that's different, and that's the exponent. You use this formula up on top if uh, your number of half-lives is a nice, round, easy-to-deal-with number. If it's not, if it's going to be a decimal uh, of some sort, then you have to figure out how many half-lives has the material gone through, and that's the lower formula right here. So let's, uh, let's actually solve this, this last problem right here. So uh, we figured this out. Let me use a different marker. Uh, time was 12 hours, and the half-life was 3.53 uh, hours, and that means we've gone through 3.40 half-lives. Okay, that's the number. That's N, the number of half-lives. And now this is a, a pretty simple uh, problem. N sub T, the amount remaining at time T, is equal to the original amount, which in this case is 1 gram, times 1 half to the 3.40 number of half-lives. Now, if you don't know how to plug this operation into your calculator right here, 1 half to the 3.4, it looks like this down here. There's a there's a small button on your calculator that's the caret. It's 0 0.4 caret 3.4, and then multiply that by 1, which you don't really need to do because you get your answer. Uh, and the answer is 0, 0.0, so n sub t, the final answer is 0 0.095 grams. That's the final answer. So let's do another one just so you can be a little more familiar with this problem. Uh, tritium, a radioactive isotope of hydrogen, again, I think we discussed this, uh, only produced artificially in atomic bomb blasts, not produced in nature. So let's say the last atmospheric bomb test was in 1963 and 480 milligrams of tritium were released. How much of that, uh, 480 milligrams, currently remains if the half-life is 12.3 years? So we need to figure out how many half-lives we've gone through. So N is equal to elapsed time. Well, the elapsed time from 1963 to this year, 2013, is equal to 50 years, exactly. So we're going to have 50 years over the time per half-life is 12.3 years. So the number of half-lives that it's gone through, 4.065, just over four half-lives. And now we can plug and chug uh, N sub T using, again, plug and chug using this formula, is equal to the original amount which was 480 milligrams times one-half to the number of half-lives, 4.065. And my answer comes out to be 28.7 milligrams existing about 50 years later. Not a small amount. But I guess that's dispersed over the entire atmosphere on the planet, so it's really not a big amount when you consider dilution. Uh, in any event, that's a quick lesson on uh, half-lives, and the next video lesson will tell you more about radioisotopic age dating using carbon-14 analysis. Good luck.